neurologic disorder, and stroke. Introduction. Many conditions related to the neuromuscular system, joints, or connected tissue have as a symptom or leave as a chronic after effect, loss of function in the form of a physical impairment. Dental hygiene treatment modalities and oral care recommendations are adapted to the unique situations created by each disorder. General suggestions that may be adapted to a variety of patients with disability are discussed in this chapter. This chapter contains descriptions of selected diseases or conditions and describes modifications and adaptations needed by the patient during oral self-care, as well as by the dental hygienist during treatment appointments. Neurologic disorders associated with physical disability. Most of the disabling conditions described in this chapter are considered neurologic disorders. A characteristic of many neurologic disorders is apto apoptosis, the death of cells specifically the nerve cells and the central nervous system. Disruption of sensory or motor neuron signals is the cause of partial and complete paralysis associated with neurologic disorders. Acute ischemia or traumatic injury to the brain or spinal cord causes necrotic immediate death of, of nerve cells in the most severely affected areas and immediate complete destruction of transmission of neurological system signals. Apoptotic cell death, a slower biochemical or metabolic destruction of the nerve cell, occurs in chronic and degenerative neurological conditions. Acute disorders. Acute neurologic disorders can be caused when one or more neurons are injured by trauma or biological assault or when there is disruption of blood flow to an area of the brain. Complete or partial loss of the motor ability, sensory perception, or cognitive function can result. Acute neurologic disorders discussed in more detail in this chapter include spinal cord injury, SCI, stroke, and Bell's palsy. Degenerative disorders. Degenerative neural disorders are as a result of progressive destruction of nerve cells. Patients with these disorders typically become increasingly disabled and dependent on caregivers to help them with everyday activities and personal care as their disease progresses over time. Degenerative neural disorders discussed in this chapter include amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, Parkinson's disease, and post-polio syndrome. Developmental disorders. Developmental impairments have their onset early in life, around the time of birth, or before a child is 18 years old. Depending on the disorder, either a stable or a progressive impairment can result. Developmental disorders highlighted in this chapter include cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophies, and myelomeningocele. <clears throat> Other conditions that limit physical ability. Joint and connected tissue diseases such as arthritis can affect a patient's ability to provide oral self-care and require adaptations during delivery of dental hygiene care. Autoimmune diseases such as myasthenia gravis, scleroderma, and rheumatoid arthritis, which can limit physical ability. Spinal cord injury. The spinal cord extends down the middle of the back and carries both motor and sensory nerves that branch to send messages between the brain and specific area of the body. External traumatic force can cause partial or complete loss of sensory in our motor function related to the spinal cord level and extent of the injury. The occurrence. There are more than 288,000 people in the United States living with SCI, approximately 17,700 new cases each year. More than one-third of trauma cases result from a motor vehicle accident. Other causes are falls, diving accidents, violence, and combat injuries. Nearly half of all injuries involved, males aged between 16 and 30 years, but as the population ages, there has been an increase in the average age of injury. Characteristics or effects of SCI. The signs and symptoms of paralysis depend on the nature and level of injury to the spinal cord. There are seven cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, and five sacral vertebrae, with paired spinal nerves extending from each. The areas of the body affected by injury at the different levels are illustrated later in this chapter. A complete lesion, a complete transection or co compression of the spinal cord leaves no sensation of motor function below the level of the lesion. Incomplete lesion, partial transection or injury of the spinal cord leaves some evidence of sensation or motor function below the level of the lesion. Some sensation and motor function may return within a few hours after injury and maximum return may occur in six to 18 months. 
Other possible effects, impairment of bladder and bowel control and sexual function, impairment of vasomotor and body temperature regulatory mechanisms. Potential secondary complications. Patients with lesions at or below the T6 level are at a greater risk for the complications described here. Impaired respiratory function. Pneumonia can sign significantly reduce life expectancy for a person with C SCI. Some quadriplegic patients are un unable to elicit a functional cough and need assistance by placing manual pressure over the abdomen below the diaphragm. After the patient has inhaled, the patient may be assisted while an attempt to cough is made. Tendency for decupitous ulcers, a pressure sore, results from tissue anoxia or ischemia caused by pressure exerted on the skin and subcutaneous tissue by pony prominences in the object on which they, they rest, such as mattresses. The cutaneous tissue becomes broken or destroyed, leading to destruction in the subcutaneous tissue. The ulcer that forms may become infected by secondary bacterial invasion and may be slow to heal. Anemia and poor nutrition may also contribute. Spasticity. As spinal shock subsides following a traumatic injury, muscle reflex spasticity develops from a slight to a sev severe degree. Stimuli such as decupitous ulcers, infections, and sensory irritation may bring on spasms. Body temperature. High level quadriplegic patients are unable to regulate body temperature, requiring careful monitoring and intervention to warm and cool the patient as necessary. Vulnerability to infection, complications related to elimination, urinary tract infections, renal stones, secondary infection of decupitous ulcers, and respiratory infection occur more commonly in this population. Cardiovascular instability, bradycardia and hypotension are common because of the loss of the sympathetic autonomic nervous system. Deep vein thrombosis is another potentially serious complication. Neurogenic bladder and bowel. Complications related to dysfunctions in emptying bladder and bowels require planning to avoid the complications of autonomic dysreflexia. Autonomic dysreflexia, the definition, autonomic dysreflexia or hyperflexia is a life-threatening emergency condition in which the blood pressure increases sharply. It may occur in patients with lesions at T6 or above. A variety of stimuli may precipitate dysreflexia, including irritation to the bowel or bladder distension. Patients who require manual bowel or bladder man management techniques are, also, are more susceptible. Symptoms, increased blood pressure with slowed pulse rate. The blood pressure may rise to 300 over 160 mmHg. Pounding headache, flushing, chills, perspiration, and stuffy nose. Restlessness, increased spasticity. Prevention, consult with the physician when the patient has history of recurrent difficulties. Avoid abrupt changes in body position and maintain a semi-upright chair position. Monitor bladder outflow, catheter tubing, outflow of urine into the catheter bag and a bladder distension. Schedule appointments that allow the patient to maintain the regular schedule for the bowel elimination program at home. Emergency care. Position chair upright gradually. Do not recline the chair because increased blood pressure in the brain could result. Check bladder distension and straighten catheter if clamped. Manually relieve bowel impaction if necessarily necessary. Monitor the blood pressure and vital signs using a medical emergency report form. Call for the medical aid if blood pressure does not begin to drop within two to three minutes. <laughs> Mouth held implements. The patient with a high level SCI who does not have strong function of the hands and the arms may use mouth held appliances to perform many tasks and the teeth for holding objects. Optimum oral health and effective biofilm control has, specific, has special significance because many functions cannot be accomplished by an edentulous mouth. Uses. Fabrication of mouth-held appliances contributes to increased independence and makes possible such activities as operating in an electric wheelchair, typing on a computer, or turning the pages of a book. Criteria. Does not harm the oral tissues. Stabilization of occlusion with contact for uh, all fully erupted teeth and the biting forces distributed to many teeth as possible. It is, it is not traumatic to the periodontal supporting structures. Does not prevent eruption of teeth. Is comfortable and do does not fa cause fatigue. Patient can talk, swallow, and moisten the lips. Orthosis can be inserted and removed by the patient. Orthosis is adaptable for the various needs of the quadriplegic patient. Can be cleaned and cared for easily. It is relatively easy to construct and inexpensive. The dental hygiene care. 
Factors to consider when planning dental hygiene care for the patient with an SCI include impaired motor and sensory ability, risk for secondary complications during treatment, autonomic dysreflexia, and aspiration due to decreased respiratory function, risk for pressure sores, potential for spasticity, spasticity poor control of body temperature, use of mouth-held implements. Moving on. Cerebral vascular accident or stroke, cerebral vac vascular accident, CVA, is the sudden loss of brain function resulting from interference of the blood supply to a part of the brain. The clinical manifestations of cerebral va vascular disease, frequent disability caused by changes in motor function, communication, and perception of hemiparesis is common. The third leading cause of death following heart disease and cancer in the United States. The stroke may be severe and death can occur within minutes. A less severe attack leaves the patient with residual and chronic effects. The etiologic factors. The blood flow decreases to an area of the brain and shuts off the oxygen supplied to the portion of the brain supplied by that vessel, resulting in cerebral infarction. The two main causes or types of stroke are ischemic stroke, occurs when a blood vessel to the brain is blocked, can be caused by atherosclerotic plaque buildup in the blood vessel. A thrombotic stroke is caused when a clot within a blood vessel of the brain or neck closes or occludes an already narrowed vessel. An embolic stroke happens when a blood vessel is blocked by a clot or other material carried through the circulation from another part of the body. Hemorrhagic stroke. It occurs when a cerebral blood vessel ruptures and bleeds into the brain tissue. Common causes include defects in blood vessels such as an aneurysm or malformation, very high blood pressure, use of a blood thinner medication, an ischemic stroke that develops a burst blood vessel and causes bleeding. Predisposing factors. Early diagnosis and treatment for control of the following predisposing factors are necessary in the prevention of stroke and its devastating effects. Atherosclerosis, hypertension, the greatest risk factor that leads to the stroke. Hypercholesterolemia, hypertriglyceridemia, tobacco use and smoking, cardiovascular disease, rheumatic heart disease, congestive heart failure, history of trans transient ischemic attacks, diabetes mellitus, use of oral contraceptives enhanced by hypertension, tobacco use, and over the age of 35, drug use, especially in adolescents and young adults. Signs and symptoms. The effects of a stroke depend on the location of the damage to the brain as well as the degree or extent of involvement. Transient ischemic attack. A brief event where the blood supply to a localized area of the brain is interrupted and the patient may have transient signs or symptoms of a stroke. These little strokes may last a few minutes to an hour and may leave no permanent damage. A history of transient attacks is a possible risk factor for warning of a stroke. Acute symptoms of a stroke. Acute symptoms and emergency pr procedures are discussed later. Residual or chronic effects. Approximately two-thirds who survive have some degree of a permanent disability. Temporary or permanent loss of thought, memory, speech, sensation, or motion results. The side of the face and the body affected is opposite that of the brain injury. Persons with right hemiplegia have more difficulty with verbal communication and are more apt to be cautious, anxious, and disorganized. Patients with left hemiplegia have difficulty with action requiring physical coordination and may respond impulsively with overconfidence. Disease risk detection. Calcifications in the carotid artery are observable on a panoramic radiograph. If present, the patient is referred for medical evaluation. Radiation therapy is associated with an accelerated form of atherosclerosis formation and risk of stroke. Medical treatment, surgical correction of aneurysms, clots, or malformations may include removal of microscopic clots in the intracranial arteries or minute grafting to bypass blocked vessels and provide collateral circulation. Physical and occupational therapy and rehabilitation techniques are vital to the patient's recovery and functioning. Careful recording of the medical history include the listing of medications. Dental hygiene care. Particular factors to consider when planning dental hygiene care for the patient with a stroke-related disability. Impaired motor and or cognitive ability. Hemiplegia, particularly if the dominant hand is affected. For example, the patient who wears dentures requires a suction cup brush. Facial paralysis, decreased self-cleansing action of the tongue and the lips. Decreased control of saliva, risk for aerosol in the eye during treatment. Medication for treatment of the condition, anticoagulant use is common following a stroke. Moving on. Bell's palsy, idiopathic temporary facial paralysis. Bell's palsy is paralysis of the facial muscles innervated by the facial or seventh cranial nerve. 
Although the cause is not known, various possible agents have been implicated, including bacterial and viral infection, particularly herpes simplex, injury, trauma from tooth removal or oral surgery, such as the removal of a tumor in the parotid gland area. Occurrence. Although relatively rare, the incidence increases with each decade of life. In younger age groups, women are more frequently affected than are men. After 50 years of age, the disorder is more common in men. Characteristics. Signs and symptoms. Abrupt weakness or paralysis of facial muscles, usually without preceding pain, occurs on one side of the, of the face. The mouth. The corner of the mouth droops and salivation with drooling is uncontrollable. The eye. Eyelid on the affected side may not close. Watering and drooping of the lower lid invites infection. When only the seventh nerve is affected, sensory responses are still intact. Functional problems. Speech and mastication may be impaired. Prognosis. A majority of patients experience a return to normal within a month with a spontaneous recovery. Others may have lasting residual effects of permanent paralysis. Medical treatment, palliative, eye protection such as an eye patch during sleep and eye lubrication drops during waking hours. Hot compresses and massaging the involved muscles provide some relief. Analgesics may relieve pain. Drugs, corticosteroids administered within the first 72 hours have been used to improve the prognosis. Antiviral drugs are prescribed sometimes, but the efficacy of such drug is unclear. Recent treatment protocols indicate combining corticosteroid and antiviral treatment may have added benefit for satisfactory recovery. Surgical. Surgical procedures to, to relieve pressure on the nerve of the, or reduce deformities have been used but are controversial and seldom recommended. Dental hygiene care. Particular factors to consider when planning dental hygiene care for a patient with Bell's palsy. Facial paralysis, decreased self-cleansing action of the tongue and lips, decreased control of saliva, risk for aerosol in eye during treatment. Medications used for treatment of the condition. Moving on, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, often referred to as Lou Gehrig's disease, is a progressive neurogenerative disorder characterized by a progressive loss of motor neurons. The occurrence. Prevalence is approximately 5 per 100,000 population, more than 12,000 people in the United States. Men are more often affected than women, Caucasians more frequently than any other ethnic group. Onset usually occurs at middle age or later, prevalence highest in those aged 70 to 79 years and lowest in those aged 18 to 39 years. The diagnosis, there is no diagnostic test for ALS. Diagnosis is usually made after ruling out other disorders with similar symptoms. Clinically diagnosed with upper and lower neuron dysfunction, although variants include a pure upper motor and pure lower motor syndrome. The etiology and pathogenesis. Unknown cause. About 90% of cases are sporadic. About 5-10% to are familial, predominantly autosomal dominant. Average life expectancy is 3-5 to five years, but the range is broad and some live much longer. Typically progressive degeneration of both upper and lower motor neurons with no periods of remission. More areas of the body are affected over time. Nearly all symptoms eventually become involved, and respiratory failure is the usual cause of death. There are two forms of ALS. Spinal form, about two-thirds of patients. Early symptoms include muscle weakness in upper and lower limbs and muscle wasting. And then the other form is bulbar onset form. Initially presents with dysarthria. Sometimes dysarthria for solids or liquids is initial symptoms. Facial weakness and wasting, spasticity of the tongue are common. Limb symptoms may develop simultaneously or can happen later as the disease progresses. Siloria, excessive secretion of saliva drooling, develops in almost all who have bulbar onset form of the disease. The symptoms, cramps and spasticity, muscle weakness, particularly in extremities, increasing respiratory difficulties, difficulty swallowing and chewing, excessive saliva, depression and anxiety, cognitive and behavioral disorders that can affect compliance with recommendations. The treatment, there is only one food and drug administration approved, and that's Rylusol. Treatment only extends survival about two months. Palliative treatment is provided by interprofessional teams. Treatment focused on progressive management of the symptoms. Siloria managed with medications, but in later stages, treatment can include radiation or Botox injections into those salivary glands. Dental hygiene care. Factors to consider when planning dental hygiene care for a patient with ALS. Increased motor impairment over time. Need for body stabilization and support. Risk for respiratory difficulties, effects of facial paralysis, and effective treatment for siloria. Moving on, Parkinson's disease. Progressive disorder of the central nervous system characterized by four primary symptoms. Tremor in hands, arms, legs, jaw, and face. Rigidity of limbs and trunk. 
bradykinesia or slowness of movement, postural instability. It is also known as paralysis, adjutans, and Parkinson's syndrome. Although the cause is unknown, the basis of the specific group of symptoms is degeneration of certain neurons in the substantia nigra of the basal ganglia where posture support and voluntary motion are controlled. In addition, a severe deficiency of dopamine, one of the substances that participates in nerve transmission occurs. Occurrence. Parkinson's disease affects as many as a million middle-aged and older persons in the United States, more than 10 million people worldwide. Incidence increases with age, and only about 4% are diagnosed before age 50. Approximately 60,000 new cases are diagnosed each year, one and a half times higher incidence in men than in women. The characteristics, the signs and symptoms center around tremor, rigidity, and loss of impairment of motor function, akinesia. These factors also occur in other conditions which are differentiated by a physician when a diagnosis is made. The disease progresses through stages from mild early to severe advanced with increasing impairment of motor function. The general manifestations, body posture bent with bent head and general stiffness. Motion and response is slow, difficulty in keeping balance and turning. Gait is slow and shuffling. Speech is monotonous and slow. Resting tremor of both or one hand is common. The tremor can be reduced or stopped when the person engages in a purposeful action such as teeth brushing. The fingers may be involved in a pill rolling motion in which the thumb and the index finger are rubbed together in a circular motion. Non-motor symptoms include variations in blood pressure, cardiac dysarrhythmias, excessive sweating, bowel and bladder dysfunction, and sleep disorders. Cognitive ability is seldom affected except in the advanced stages. Eventually, after 10 to 20 years, the person may become incapacitated and may require complete care. Face and oral cavity. Expression is fixed and mask-like with diminished eye blinking, tremor or exaggerated movement in the lips, tongue, and neck, and difficulty in swallowing, excess salivation and drooling. The treatment. Although no known cure exists for Parkinson's disease, symptomatic control can be accomplished in part by replenishing the dopamine storage with a shortage with levopin due in combination with other medications. The side effects can include dizziness and confusion. Maintenance of good general health is encouraged, including plenty of rest and nutritious meals. Professional physical therapy and occupational therapy have particular significance for a patient's well-being. Surgical relief for some symptoms include um, are accomplished by deep brain stimulation or pallidot pallidotomy. The dental hygiene care. Particular factors to consider when planning dental hygiene care for the patient with Parkinson's disease includes increased motor impairment, tremor, and rigidity over time with interferes with daily activities, rigid, uncontrolled facial muscles, poor control of eyes, lips, tongues, and swallowing muscles, increased drooling of saliva, need for short appointments, potential for cognitive deficits over time, adverse drug interactions and reactions, and need for caregiver education. Moving on, post-polio syndrome. The description, condition that affects adults years after recovery from an initial attack of poliomyelitis virus when, the, when they were children. The cause is unknown. Prevalence is currently unknown, but appears to be growing. Treatment focus is mainly palliative, with exercise often prescribed to strengthen specific muscle groups. Characterized by progressive weakness, muscle weakness, fatigue, muscle and joint pain, and potential muscle atrophy in muscles originally affected by the poliomyelitis as well as other muscles, including oral facial muscles. Dental hygiene care. Particular factors to consider when planning dental hygiene care for the patient with multiple sclerosis. Impaired motor ability. Weakness in respiratory and swallowing muscles. Cerebral palsy. The description, a group of disorders that involve the cerebral cortex, the part of the brain that directs motor function. Damage to the developing brain can occur as during fetal development, usually congenital. Natally or postnatally, it can be acquired. In many cases, the cause is unknown, but can be related to abnormal development of the brain, bleeding in the brain, and severe lack of oxygen. Risk factors include maternal infections, thyroid abnormalities, or seizures during pregnancy. Maternal exposure to toxic substances during pregnancy, blood type incompatibility with between the mother and the child, complicated labor and delivery, breach position of the baby during birth, or multiple births, infant jaundice infection or seizures after birth, severe head injury after birth. Symptoms usually can be observed during the first year after birth, but if symptoms are mild, it may not be noticed for several years. Cerebral palsy is not progressive. Classifications. Cerebral palsy is classified into four types according to associated motor impairments. Number one, spastic, spastic palsy. Number two, dyskinetic 
or athetoid palsy, number three, ataxic palsy, and number four, combined palsy. Accompanying conditions, primitive reflexes and abnormal response to stimuli, asymmetric tonic knot neck reflux, when head is turned, same side extremities extend and stiffen while opposite side extremities flex, tonic labyrinthine reflex, if neck is extended back, extremities also extend back and is arched, startle reflex, any surprising stimuli can trigger uncontrolled body movements, Contractures, muscles fixed in abnormal positions, increase in muscle spasticity and joint deformities, seizures. As many as half the seizures in those seizures disorders are more likely to have an intellectual disability. Sensory disorders, visual impairment and hearing loss are common. Speech and language disorders, speech may be slowed and difficult to understand due to lack of control of the mouth and throat muscles, dysarthria. Difficulty processing auditory information, cognitive impairment. Some individuals with cerebral palsy also have significant cognitive impairment. More than 50% do not have intellectual or cognitive disabilities. Therefore, in inability to communicate does not necessarily mean lack of comprehension. Of the 50% who are not significantly intellectually impaired, some may learn more slowly because of sensory impairments, perceptive cognitive deficiencies, and speech difficulties. Medical treatment. Interprofessional teams of healthcare providers caring for individuals with cerebral palsy can include medical, surgical, orthopedic, and dental providers, as well as speech, physical, recreational, and occupational therapists. Orthotic devices to support the lower limbs and use the cane, crutches, walker, wheelchair may help to increase function. Surgery may be needed for addressing orthopedic deformities, correcting eye and ear difficulties, or severe, severing nerve to relax muscles and reduce chronic pain. Oral medications may be used to reduce tension in affected muscles, aid in pain management, or control seizures. Oral characteristics, disturbances of musculature, facial grimacing, facial asymmetry, and abnormal function of the muscle of mastication, swallowing and speech are common. Spasticity of oral facial muscles can interfere with daily oral care. Inability to close lips contributes to increased drooling. Hyperactive bite and gag reflex can present difficulties during dental and dental hygiene therapy, as well as during biofilm control at home. Malocclusion. The incidence of malocclusion is high, often a musculoskeletal abnormality rather than only misaligned teeth. Oral habits of mouth breathing, tongue thrusting, and faulty swallowing contribute to open bite with protruding anterior teeth. Attrition and erosion. Severe, constant, and voluntary bruxism is common and can severely wear down to structure and restorations. Gastroesophageal reflux can cause erosion of oral tissues. Oral injury. Patients may fall frequently, which can damage and fracture teeth and jaws. Dental caries. The rate of dental caries may be higher, but the risk factor for the patient with cerebral palsy are the same as the general population. Difficulties in maintaining biofilm control and problems of mastication can lead to the use of soft diet, which increases the risk for dental caries. Periodontal infections. Periodontal or gingival infections are found in a high percentage of patients with cerebral palsy. Phenytoin-induced gingival overgrowth. When phenytoin is used for the prevention of seizure, the patient is susceptible to gingival enlargement. Risk factors for periodontal involvement. Mechanical difficulties related to biofilm control, mouth breathing, and increased food retention because of ineffective self-cleansing all lead to increased periodontal involvement in biofilm collection. Many patients with cerebral palsy have heavy calculus deposits. Dental hygiene care. Particular factors to consider when planning dental hygiene care for the patient with cerebral palsy. Numerous associated oral characteristics and predisposing factors for oral disease. Impaired motor ability, uncontrolled movements, reflexive reactions. Compromised ventilatory capacity, involvement of the muscles in the head and neck, need for body stabilization and support due to joint contractures, potential co cognitive impairment and compromised communication, and increased risk for seizures. I'm going to get a drink really quick. Hang tight. Okay, moving on. Muscular dystrophies. The muscular dystrophies are a group of more than 30 genetic myopathies characterized by progressive severe weakness and loss of loss of, of groups of muscle. The term dystrophy means degeneration and is associated with atrophy and dysfunction. The syndromes of muscular dystrophy have been separated by clinical and genetic means and range from mild Becker type with a later onset to a more severe type Duchenne facioscapulohumeral. All types of muscular dystrophy are genetically inherited, and the underlying pathologic process do not differ. 
Generally, the disease are limited to skeletal muscles with cardiac muscles only rarely involved. In the United States, more than 50,000 children and adults are affected with some form of muscular dystrophy. Duchenne muscular dystrophy, pseudohypertrophic. The occurrence, the Duchenne muscular dystrophy DMD type is primarily limited to males and transmitted by female carriers. The prevalence of approximately 1 to 7, 250 males, I'll, I'll repeat that, the prevalence of approximately 1 to 7 out of 250 males, 5 to 24 years of age. Age of onset, the condition is present at birth and becomes apparent during early childhood. Usually diagnosed at an average age of 4.9 years. Characteristic, musculature, enlargement, pseudo hypertrophy of certain muscles, particularly the calves is present in early years. Weakness of the hips, child falls frequently, has increasing difficulty in standing erect. Lordosis with an abdominal protrudence, waddling, either walks on toes or flat foot because of muscular contracture. Precarious balance. Patient arches back in attempt to find center gravity. Gait is slow because balance needs to be sustained during each step. Progressive muscular wasting. Eventually, involvement of thighs, shoulders, trunk, weakness of respiratory muscles. Inactivity is determined and increases the individual's helplessness and independency. Intellectual impairment. A mild degree of men mental impairment is noted in some persons with DMD. Cardiac abnormalities, arrhythmia, and cardiomyopathy are common. The prognosis, dis disablement severe by puberty. Child is confined to a wheelchair. Patients rarely live to reach the third decade. The next one, facioscapulohumeral muscular dystrophy occurrence. Males and females are affected equally. Incidence is approximately 1 in 20,000. Age of onset is between 6 and 20 years with an average age of 13 years after puberty. Mild symptoms may appear at later ages with rare causes occurring during infancy. The characteristics. Facial muscles involve particularly the orbicularis oris. The effect of gaping lips on oral tissue is similar to mouth breathing. Malocclusion and temporomandibular disorder problems have been noted. Scapular prominent, shoulder muscle weak, difficulty in raising arms, and difficulty in closing eyes completely, and cardiac involvement are rare. The prognosis. The progression is slower than that of Duchenne type, and, pro and progress may become arrested. Most patients live a normal lifespan and become incapacitated later in life. The next one, myto myotonic muscular dystrophy, stainier disease. Most common form in adults can appear any time from early childhood to adulthood. Affects both men and women. Prolonged spasms of muscles after use, usually worse in cold temps. Also affects central nervous system, heart, gastrointestinal tract, eyes, and hormone producing glands. Other types of muscular dystrophy. Other less common types of muscular dystrophy include Becker, similar to Duchenne type, but more benign with a later onset of 5 to 15 years. Emery Dreyfus. Onset between 5 and 30 years, generally benign, but severe cardiomyopathy and risk for sudden death is a future. Limb girdle. Most, se most severely affects muscles of the hips and shoulders, manifest in late childhood, early adolescence, and ranges from rapidly to slowly progressive. Oculopharyngeal and mitotonic dystrophies. Each is relatively rare, has onset between 20 and 50 years of age, is slowly progressive, and features extensive involvement of orofacial muscles. The medical treatment. Supportive treatment consists of physical, occupational, and speech therapy, respiratory therapy. Drug therapy includes corticosteroids, anticonvulsants, immunosuppressants, antibiotics for treating respiratory infection. Prevent, preventive treatment consists of prenatal diagnosis, carrier detection, and genetic counseling. Dental hygiene care. Particular factors to consider when planning dental hygiene care for the patient with muscular dystrophy, impaired motor ability, potential need for body stabilization and support, and some type involve orofacial muscles. Moving on. Myelomeningocele. Spina bifida is a congenital defect or opening in the spinal column. A portion of the spinal membranes may protrude through the opening with or without spinal cord tissue. When the spinal cord protrudes through the spina bifida, the condition is called myelomeningocele. Anticipatory guidance prior to conception include the use of multivitamins containing recommended levels of folic acid. A reduced risk of offspring with spina bifida and other neural tube defects has been shown when mothers receive folic acid. Patients with spina bifida appear to be specifically at risk for latex hypersensitivity. 
Precautions and management of latex hypertensity are discussed later. The description. Embryologically, a neural, neural tube forms during the first month of pregnancy. From the neural tube, the brain, brain stem, and spinal cord arise, and eventually the vertebrae form and enclose the spinal cord. When a place in the spinal column fails to close, the result is an open defect in the spinal canal, which is called spina bifida. There are types of deformities. Myelomeningocele is a protrusion or outpatching of the spinal cord and its coverings or meninges through an opening in the spinal bony spinal column. Because part of the spinal cord and nerve roots protrude, flaccid paralysis of the legs and parts of the trunk results depending on the level of the protrusion, herniation. The next one is meningocele. It is a protrusion of the meninges through a defect in the skull or spinal column. No neural elements are contained in the protrusion but can cause minor disabilities. Next one, closed neural tube defect. Malformations in fat, bone, and meninges of the spinal cord. Few or no symptoms in most instances. Sometimes cause incomplete paralysis with urinary and bowel dysfunction. The last one, spina bifida oculata. Spina bifida oculata is a congenital cleft in the bony encasement of the spinal cord in which no outpouching of the meninges or spinal cord exists. Usually, spina bifida oculata has no symptoms. The physical characteristics, depending on the level of the meningo myelomeningocele, some of the following signs and physical characteristics may be found. Bony deformities. Muscle imbalance from paralysis can cause dislocation of the hip, club foot, and spinal curvature, such as humpback kyphosis, curvature, scoliosis, or swayback lordosis. Loss of sensation, lack of skin sensitivity to pain, temperature, and other sensations can lead to a problem of an inadvertent burn or trauma unrecognized by the patient or caregiver or pressure sores. Frequent position changes are necessary during dental hygiene care. Bladder and bowel paralysis. The nerve supplies to the bladder and the bowel are usually affected. Lack of bowel and bladder control requires continual attention. Kidney infection with loss of kidney function is one cause of a shorter life expectancy. Hydrocephalus. A high percentage of children with myelomeningocele have hydrocephalus. It is a condition characterized by an excessive accumulation of fluid on the brain. The fluid dilates the cerebral ventricles, causes compression of brain tissues, and separates the cranial brain bones in the head, and it enlarges. Development is slowed and intellectual disability may be present. Many of these patients have seizures. Medical treatment, surgical, orthopedic, and urologic treatment, as well as physical and occupational therapy may constitute a minimum of specialties involved in the care of a patient with myelomeningocele. Neurosurgery, closure of the myelomeningocele. Surgical closure helps to prevent infection that may otherwise enter the spinal cord. Paralysis is not lessened by the surgery. Treatment of hydrocephalus. Permanent drainage systems may be accomplished in the form of ventriculo ventriculoatrial shunt between the cerebral ventricle and atrium of the heart, sometimes drainage by way of the abdomen in the form of ventriculoperitoneal shunt is used. Individuals who have cerebral spinal fluid shunt are at an increased risk for transient infections. Need for premedication during dental treatment is established at the medical consult. Orthopedic surgery. Orthopedic surgical procedures can assist by reducing or correcting deformities. Bracing to support the trunk and lower limbs is used in accord with extent of the individual paralysis. Ambulation varies from dependency on a wheelchair, walker, crutches, or cane to near normal with only one foot problem. With only foot problems. Dental hygiene care. Particular factors to consider when planning dental hygiene care for the patient with myelomeningocele. Impaired motor ability. Potential need for body stabilization and support. Increased risk for latex allergy and transient infections related to cerebral spinal fluid shunt. Moving on. Arthritis. Diseases of joints, including arthritis, are among the most common causes of chronic illness in the United States. In addition to arthritis as a disease entity, arthritic manifestations may occur as a symptom of various other chronic diseases. A person may suffer from more than one type at a time. Arthritis means inflammation in a joint. It may occur in an acute or chronic form and may be localized or generalized. When many joints are involved, the term polyarthritis may be applied. The resulting disability may be temporary or permanent, partial or complete. Factors implicated in the case of rheumatic and arthritic disease include infectious agents, traumatic disorders, endocrine abnormalities, tumors, allergies, and drug reactions, and inherited or congenital conditions. When the cause is known, specific medical, physical, and surgical therapies may be available to alleviate pain and disability. Degenerative joint disease, osteoarthritis. 
It's a chronic condition related to the breakdown and progressive loss of the hyaline cartilage cushion in the joints. Eventually changes in the underlying bone are noted. Inflammation is not a key symptom, particularly affects the weight bearing joints. No specific cause known, but predisposing factors include repeated trauma and mechanical stresses to weight bearing joints. Obesity, age related changes in the joint tissue, genetic predisposition, estrogen deficiency and high bone density may fa be factors. Occurrence, affects approximately 14% of adults above 25 years of age and more than one third of those above 65 years of age. Incident increases with age and levels off around 80. Women, particularly those above 50 years, have a higher rate than men. Symptoms. At first insidious, insidious, the condition leads to pain, deformity, and limitation of movement. Hips, knees, fingers, and vertebrae affect most frequently. Swelling and inflammation rare and ankylosis does not occur. Stiffness in the morning on rising after periods of inactivity diminishes with exercise. Pain aggravated by temperature changes, bearing, body weight, and strenuous activity. Temporomandibular joint usually without pain or other clinical symptoms, although crepitation, clicking, or snapping may occur when the joints are exercised. Medical treatment, physical therapy, and regular moderate exercise, pain relieving drug therapy, weight reduction for obese patients, total joint replacements has proved satisfactory for many patients. Dental hygiene care. Particular factors to consider when planning dental hygiene care for the patient with arthritis include joint pain, contributes, or impaired motor function, and difficulty performing everyday activities of living. Affected areas, degree of impairment, and adaptations to provide the patient comfort are considered when planning care for providing instruction for oral self-care. The effects of osteoarthritis on the hands of an older patient is considered when planning for self-care procedures.